Hello and um, welcome back to my craft room. Um, I feel like uh, getting a bit messy in my um, Rex journal today so I've got a few pages a bit marked and I'm going to combine this with trying out a product that's new to me. It's one of these watercolour grounds. I think there's different makes that do it. I've got a Schmincke one. I just got that through Amazon. It cost me about £12 I think. Um, I thought I'd managed to buy one that was transparent but reading what it says on here I think it's going to be white but that's okay because normally normally that would be fine i was quite interested to try a transparent one though because apparently it'll make any surface usable with watercolors or other you know water-based medium so let's go to my desk quite excited to try this i've got a few different surfaces i'm going to be trying over the next few days actually um i've got different kinds of upo paper to play with i've got some some of this stuff bit fascinating anyway i'll i'll uh, i'm not going to get sidetracked by that now so the first thing i'm going to do is um normally this book paper isn't great with uh wet media really so um i think this is a good one to try it out on and this page is actually color this entire page so i'm just going to apply this and then i'm going to use some of these lovely derwent pastel colors which are more like a gouache type of thing really that we got in the scroll box last month and also some more of my current favorite watercolor paints <laughs> the only irritating thing about these is that the pans keep falling out anyway i'll sort that in a minute so i'm going to be using a combination of those and i'm just gonna try and just do some kind of lovely cloudy washes all over the entire page and then i might do some doodling into it as well i don't know i'll see how the mood takes me but the first thing is to get a coat of this on very oh <laughs> whoops and i haven't got my painty clothes on either so oh that's a really good start isn't it what I was going to say was the first thing is to give it a sniff test but there's a faint smell to it but it's not too bad actually I've just applied it to my nose which I watercolour in my nose later as well <laughs> now that would be an interesting experiment I could get myself a permanent clown nose now I don't know if I should or not but I'm just the brush I'm going to use to apply it I'm just getting it damp with water first because I tend to find certainly with acrylic paints and things if you get the brush a little bit damp first it doesn't seem to it seems to make it easier to clean later on so I'm just going to apply this over the whole page there doesn't seem to be any instruction with it um, I suppose it's meant to be obvious I'm just going to do it in the same way that I would a thin coat of gesso and we'll see how we go I think when I was reading up about it I, I seem to recall somewhere that somebody said um, give it several coats but oops. I think I might see just how I go with one And I don't know if, you know, like with gesso, I don't mind getting some lines and shapes in it because it makes it, it makes the paint behave in an interesting way. But I guess with this, you really want to get quite a smooth coat. I don't know. There we go. That seems like nearly dry already. I'm just going to put, use up that last little bit on there. Let's see how we go. I think I may have got a thicker coat on that left hand page. And what I might do is uh, I'll just find one of the other pages that I can just try a little bit on just to just to see the difference because of course that would make it more useful. Just one of these facing pages or something. Because the other thing that I hope this is going to do is at least to some extent stop it going through to the uh, the page before. So obviously I'm going to have to leave that to dry. I've also been saving some of this Amazon packaging paper because I hate throwing it away. I know it can be recycled, but I hate throwing it away, even in the recycling. So um, what I'm hoping to do is make some little kind of sketchbooks out of it. I've done it before. Um, this is my little one of my little idea scribble books. I put all sorts of um, I put all sorts of things in. This is the beginning of when I was thinking through my boho bunting <laughs> that I've actually just finished. I need to be a bit more careful of my clothes. So yeah, I sort of think ideas through on this, but it would be nice if I could get... In fact, actually, I'm not going to do it on that paper. I'll just do it in this book. It'd be quite good if I could, you know, in my ideas book, just do little uh, painty sketches sometimes. So let's see, let's see. So uh, be a good test of how kind of how white it gets. It says it dries to a white elastic film. Now that's gone on quite wet because I think my brush was quite wet. So I'm thinking 
it's just I might be doing it all wrong and I'm assuming that if you want a really solid white um, background you would let it dry do another coat let's see how see how this is doing how long is it taking to dry Ooh. Yeah, it's drying pretty fast. It's certainly drying pretty fast on that side, which I think was a thinner coat. This is thicker. Let's give this another. Let's give this another coat. Um, and I don't know if uh, Schmincke does it because I only saw this this one. And something about the blurb just made me think it was clear. Uh, clearly, it's not. <laughs> um, but I know there are other makes that do clear ones as well so I will if this works out really well I will get hold of some of the clear stuff too yeah where it's on really thin it does dry pretty fast and I guess that depends on temperature and humidity obviously it has got a kind of a probably shouldn't deliberately inhale it really <laughs> Use in a well ventilated room. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, I don't know what the base of it is, but it has got a very kind of B I T C I T M I T O I T. I've no idea what that means. May produce an allergic reaction. Contains biocidal products. I don't know what that means. I'll have to look it up. But anyway, I probably shouldn't really be snipping it. So I am going to stop recording, let this dry and go and put um, an old top on because I've got a feeling I'm going to get this all over the place. <laughs> and I'll be back in a minute. I have given this quite a while to dry and gave it a blast with a hairdryer from the other side as well. Um, it's curled the page up slightly, but I think that would um, soon smooth out if you just dried it flat. It's a lovely kind of dense white, but then it was applied on, on white paper. Feels it feels a little bit like hot press watercolour paper. And I think you can buy a coarse and a fine version. I bought the fine version because I prefer hot press, I prefer a smoother. I don't usually want so much texture in the paper so yeah it kind of feels it kind of feels like that but obviously it's got my brush strokes in it um one thing that bugged me is that i had to go and empty my jam jar that i washed my brush in initially i had to go and run up the road to find a, a drain to throw it down because we don't have any kind of open drains outside our property they're all kind of underground um so I say I had to run up the road. My husband ran up the road for me to find a drain to throw it down because I didn't really want to put it down the sink, which bugged me. So, um, because obviously, you know, if it's designed to make a flexible uh, permanent coating on this paper, it could do that on the inside of your pipes as well. You don't want that, do you? You don't want that going into the water system, really. So, um, what I'm going to experiment with now, I've done the same with this and it hasn't come up, obviously, so opaque white because it's on this paper I have to dry this from the back as well it's quite damp on the back what I'm going to do is try applying another coat but this time I'm going to do it with a credit card and see if I can do it with that because then I can just wipe it off on my old rag and in the end that will go in the bin but mostly I would wipe it off in an art journal or something so it doesn't get wasted so let's see how that goes because um, I do sometimes do this with gesso maybe I'll, I'll get a smoother coat in this way as well Maybe I should do so, you know, do it in one direction and then another direction. I don't know. Maybe it would have paid to see if there's some tutorials and things first. It just felt like playing. It just came in the post and I just wanted, I just couldn't wait really. But I mean, this is really rubbish paper, really rubbish paper. If I could make this usable at all, I'd be chuffed. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. That's probably a bit thick. Probably several thin coats would be better, I'm sure. So obviously at the, at the moment it kind of looks a bit and, and applies a bit in the same way that you would with gesso, but with gesso it wouldn't work the same with water colour paints and things like that because this has got a 
a certain amount of absorbency like watercolour paper would have so yeah I'm really excited to try this so I'm going to go to my already nice and dry pages and I'm going to try this out and try using it in much the same way that I would normal watercolour paper and we'll see I think the first thing I'll try is these watercolour paints so these are the ones by unpronounceable company I have absolutely no idea how you meant to pronounce that I even wondered if it should be pronounced like a, a U or a W but it, it's still unpronounceable to me so if anyone can shed any light on how I'm actually supposed to say that that name um, <laughs> please let me know in the comments I have no idea right I'm going to try first of all just spritzing a bit of water on the page and dropping some watercolour into it let's just wake these colours up a bit first let's try some purple where did it, where did it go Mm. and see if that was gesso it would just kind of be running over the surface but this is slightly absorbing like the like watercolour paper would so obviously I want to bring you down a little bit you can see the texture where my brush strokes are but I quite like that I'm just trying some of the things that I would usually do. Oh, that's granulating nicely with um, if I was using normal watercolour paper, including picking the paint back up off. How, do, how does it leave it clean behind? Yes, it does, Mr. Bird. just going to do a little bit try doing the same thing on just this this page here so it looks fine it's fine but it's soaking straight in that paper's getting really wet but the paint has stopped spreading now because it's sunk straight in um, so I can't get some of the effects and things with blending the paints that I got before I can't do things like putting a little drop of water here and letting the paint wick up into it because it's just not happening it's just settled where it is now and it's also gone straight through to the other side and I can't pick paint I can't pick the paint off again with a damp brush so yeah that that's okay I could have made that work but this is definitely behaving more like proper watercolour paper now um you can definitely see all the brush strokes and things it'd be interesting to see how the, the credit card one fares
putting some just clean water up here. Just going into that. Yeah, I mean, I am not in any way an expert watercolourist, but I'm playing with this in the same way that I would expect to play with watercolour paints on watercolour paper. And it seems to be doing pretty much the same thing. I'm quite impressed with it. Um, I'm just going to try the... Uh, whoops. I want to kind of leave that to sit and see how it dries. Let's see if we get that lovely... If I can be patient enough to let that dry. I've just ruined it now. <laughs> Um, to let that dry naturally and see if it does all those interesting things that you get when you leave watercolour paper to dry naturally. I see I can't resist playing now. Um, right, so let's try some of these other ones as well. So these you kind of use them like watercolour. It, it's they're more like a gouache, I, I think. And they're quite chalky and pastely, so it's a bit of a different, uh, a different kind of uh, effect. Right, well, I'm going to um, carry on playing with this and speed it through so you can see, and then I might think about doing a bit of doodling into it. Um, but I'm quite enjoying just playing with these. Um, the thing is to let it, like with any kind of watercolour, just let it do its own thing slowly. So, um, yeah, I will I will film it and uh, put a bit of music on for you to listen to when I do that. And then I might try doing another coat as well, see how robust this is. I was about to see if it stands up to um, several coats. So I can build up the intensity of some of these colours a little bit. Okay, I've got my two jars of water over here. Dirty water for washing off and clean water in a separate jar. <laughs> I'm going to make myself patiently walk away and let this dry and change my water. I want to try that other paper as well. It certainly, I mean, the fact that it is a mess is down to my lack of skill, not down to the the um, product, because it's definitely making it. I mean, there's no, absolutely no way I could have done any of this on that paper as it was. No way at all. Um, 
So I'm going to dab up the really obvious excess a little bit. I should be able to then move the page without disturbing it too much. And then when it's dry, I'm going to go back in with another layer of similar colours over the top of the similar cut. I don't want to start mixing the colours and making it all muddy. I will be interested to see if once it's dry, if it holds on to the colour in the same way that watercolour paper would. Will I be able to lift it a little bit? Will it still reactivate and mix a little bit? Um, so that will be, yeah, that will be interesting. But I'm going to be careful not to kind of put colours over the top of each other that are opposite on the colour wheel and all of that cause so it doesn't go all muddy because I like the light, nice, fresh, bright colours. And then when I've done that I'll let it dry again and try doodling over with my um, micron pens and see how they like this um, product watercolour ground. Imagine the drying plan is going to be pretty much the same as if it was on normal watercolour paper. Okay so let's try let's try this on this really rubbish paper. This time I'm, in, I'm gonna just do some random splashes of clean water on the paper first. Now of course if I did that on the <laughs> on the paper as is it would just like sink straight in and, and just fall apart so this is this will be a really good test. Well, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if it's the way I'm using them or what, but I'm finding with these more gouache type things, like I'm getting lots of bubbles. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's anything to do with this or just, I don't know. I don't know what that is. And I just don't find it's kind of sitting on the, sitting into, you know, kind of sinking in in quite the same way as the watercolours. And that's just like a, ended up like a washy back. I wanted to see if I could still blend them after they'd been on the paper for a few minutes could I still work with them and blend them and definitely you could um th that's not the most beautiful background but you can see you know what you could do with it if you had the skill which I don't <laughs> let's see how this one is doing I'm gonna go off and give that a good dry with the hair dryer and then I can do another coat right so I've been and dried that with a hair dryer now um it's good the only it's it's you can see it's come through slightly the, the spine but that's only because I hadn't fully coated it this one and it soaked right in loads of it so and that was just me being messy with this so that's what it would have looked like if I hadn't have treated it and yeah I could have covered the page with with color with these paints but it definitely uh, I couldn't have done all the blending and running and and stuff that I've done you can see where the brush strokes of where I've put the, applied the product are but I quite like that look I certainly think for doing backgrounds and things like that in these kind of books where the paper's a bit rubbish and gesso isn't going to work because it's it's got that sort of sheen to it that the watercolour paints they really like to work on it it will certainly be worth having it's definitely something that will be coming out regularly a bit like I use transparent gesso a lot white gesso a lot um, this will be another one of those things I, I think um it might just be the way I'm applying it and I probably need to look at some tutorials but definitely I can't make it look sort of a smooth perfect like watercolour paper surface. Um, I'd be really interested to try one of the clear ones and see if you could like because it says you can use it on cardboard or wood or anything. Now where I've used it on this surface this hasn't fully dried yet. It worked really well. It did allow me to blend the watercolours and, and things like that. There's absolutely no way I could have done that on this paper as was. The only thing is because of the rubbish quality of the paper and the way I applied the product, because I used the card with this one, there's kind of lines down it and, um, you know, it's not a nice smooth fit. So it wasn't a really a fair test. So I would be interested, like for instance, to try the clear version on wood so that the wood grain showed through with watercolour over the top of it 
um, that kind of thing. Uh, but having now splashed out all that money for this one, I'm probably not going to buy another clear one just yet. But I'll bear that in mind next time. So now what I'm going to do is um, stop waffling on, cover the rest of this page, um, just I'll fill in all of the gaps because it says colour the entire page. So I'm not going to leave any white space this time. Um, and I'm just going to be mindful that, for instance, I might put some yellow in here because the yellow will go with the, the pinky red and the blue. But I probably wouldn't put the yellow up here because I don't like the way yellow mixes with purple. And I want the colours to stay sort of quite fresh and vibrant. So that's the kind of thing I'm going to bear in mind. And I'm just going to layer over some of the colours that are already there and fill in all of these gaps. So I'll just I'll whiz through that and um, play some music. I'm going to turn this light off again because when it gets wet, it catches the light and you can't. I don't think it helps. <laughs> OK, watch this space. interesting um, effects going on there. I don't want to disturb the page. Generally, I've had a lovely time playing with that. I'd be interested to see how it all dries up. I did find um, that I was able to lift a little bit, even the colour that had already dried on the previous layer. I did have a little try with that. And yeah, definitely it's paper. Other than the fact that it's curling up and that's making it difficult, and it's in a book and that's making it difficult, if it was taped down onto something flat, there wouldn't be a problem at all. It would be much more controllable. Yeah, I love this stuff. There's no way I could have done this in... Um, in this book without this product. Not so impressed with that. They'll become backgrounds for something though, but it was interesting. I think it would need another layer and it would need to be taped down, but I could make this paper work. So it's pretty impressive really. Um, and as I say, I'm by no means a watercolour expert, so I'm sure somebody that knows what they're doing. I think um, I'm going to really enjoy the contrast, some of these really dark parts. I hope they dry up equally dark. I mean, that's not just the the paper and the stuff and the and the, the aqua ground applied on the paper it's also the paints and it's the way i've applied them so yeah there's some really interesting little textures and things going on um where you know which is down to how i've applied the stuff in the first place yeah really happy with that and then when it's all dried up i'll probably have a bit have a bit of a doodle into it okay well that's that's that done for now. Thank you very much for joining me and um, I will see you again really soon with another experiment. <laughs>